You can see where I monkeyed it up. But the other one did fold a whole lot neater, taking that fold to the outside rather than that outside fold into the valley. Roughly five and a half, seven and a quarter, so five and a half by seven. Now our decision is, I've got two pieces of packaging here. We really need to cut it a little bit bigger than the pages. Because of the inconsistency, and since the spine is not going to be anchored in any way, we want it to be a little bit bigger. I think that'll work. If I go an eighth of an inch, quarter inch total. Well, that's almost seven and a half there where you can tell where I cut it crooked. Let's go seven, seven and three quarters. By five and five eighths. Pull my new crocodile over. I love this thing cuts through this packaging like butter. Okay, seven and three quarters. Sorry for my head. By five and five eighths. Ta-da. Quick work, huh? Now if I did this, yep, I did, I want it to hang, well, I think we got it good enough. Where it's uneven, most uneven is on the top and bottom. In the back side, I kind of thought I would have it flush. And that doesn't give much of an overhang on that side, but I think that's fine. So, cut another one. Just happened to have one. Okay, pay attention. This side. Five and five eighths. Use the pretty end. Seven and three quarters. Oh, voila. We have two. One on the back and one on the front. And then we'll be able to open it both ways. I think I'm uh, maybe not done. Now I need to decide what kind of paper I'm going to put on it. And I pulled out two. These are both Seven Gypsies by Canvas Corp. This is one of my favorites. I painted Silver Girl on her and I just love it. Yes, there is a video on Silver Girl. So I could put that there and put that on the other side. That'd be real pretty, wouldn't it? Okay, and then I've got this one, which is white lace on craft paper. You know what, I'm in a girly flirty mood today, so we're going to do this one. The paper is 12 by 12, and this was 5 and 5 eighths, which is just real close to half. Good planning, Ricky. So I'm going to cut it in half. I don't need that out right now. So this would be at six. Let's see how much. OK. 
Okay, that left us a quarter inch to wrap around. Huh. Alrighty. So now we want a quarter inch. Do we? We could do more there. Alright, so I'm going to cut the half inch off. I'm going to sneak up on it. Here's the plan. Well, it'd be nice if you did it this way. Paper. And I'll be able to fold that up, fold that down. And I think I've got another piece of that paper over there that I can maybe use this side to cover the back with. So that's gonna that's gonna work. So I don't know if this is going to work or not. The one I have sitting over here to the side. I want to score this at not much. have a Fiskars over here. This isn't going to do it. Pull up the old Fiskars. Knock everything off that bottom shelf. This one has grooves that you can score. It has this groove which you can score right smack dab in the middle. And that's such a little amount of scoring. If you saw my brain fart right there, I was wondering if you could take that off and flip it and use that for the score. And then I thought, yeah, you could, but you've got that blade. Might not be the smartest idea when you've got a bone folder right there handy. We didn't get much. This is stiff paper. get any at all. I wonder why. Because it's stiff paper. Cut a little bit. Anything will help when it's that little amount. I started in the middle so I could put some more pressure down. There's so many ways you could do this. Instead of turning the edge over, you could bind it with some decorative tape or something like that. Always a possibility.
you know, I don't think that's going to be a good idea at all. So I'm going to fold these up and then trim the sides. How about that? And I'm going to take my sanding tool. This is my art see what do they call it don't remember the little tool buy one at Joann's or Michael's when they're on sale and I'm going to scratch this up a little bit very little bit I'm going to put the bigger the coarse sandpaper one on Now what this is going to do, this is a, a plastic coat on this paper, this packaging. This is going to scratch the surface so that I can be assured I will get a... Ooh, it's coming right off. I'm taking the plastic off. That's good too. Anyway, it will make sure that the matte medium sticks. A lot of people don't even work on, don't even cover these type of journals. And those little bits of plastic will forever be in my work. Got it pretty good. It doesn't hurt to go ahead and do both sides. This side is just glossy. It doesn't have plastic on it. One down. And I'm going to dust both of these off with this wet wipe. I need to turn that back there with a knife. Everything fall in the floor. Just get the dust off of it. Now I just happen to have some Delarani acrylic matte medium. Which I'm going to use. I think I'm going to put that. It doesn't really matter. It doesn't really matter. This is a little bit thicker than um, back over there. <clears throat> a little bit thicker than the um, deco art media, but it's not heavy. I'm just using my fingers. I usually end up getting my fingers all in it anyway, so. And now I'm going to coat the back of the paper. This stuff is, I like it a lot. And uh, the price is right. If you can find the deco art at Joann's, some Joann's have them. Or if you're buying a bunch of stuff from somewhere else, mail order, get it because it's good. And um, if you can't, then get the Walmart brand. I think it's $3.97 for 8.4 fluid ounces. see which side I want that side flush since I'm going to trim this anyway I want to take advantage of the rose border
what that means is I can probably wrap this side over and have enough. Just give me a little more strength on that edge. I'm using uh, little clamps. These are Seven Gypsies clamps and I love them because they're tiny and they've got a good grip. Ah, that looks nice. What all did you get on the front of it? Boogers. Oh well. This is a play journal, right? Some of that's in the paper. Quit worrying about it, Joey's make it worse. I don't have to put paper on the back of this because the the book is going to glue to it. Hello. It's the binding edge. That glues there. So all I have to do is fold the paper in and it glues down right there. Because you lose the front and back. Okay. Okay, it's the work. Don't you just love happy accidents? Now your paper is going to rumple a little bit on you because when paper gets wet, matte medium, Elmer's, PVA, all that stuff has water in it, the paper stretches. But typically as it dries, it will go back out. I mean, it will tighten back up. So don't panic. Just try to get it as flat as you possibly can, and then don't worry about it. I designed a binding system, or a tie system, and I found some black, I think it's yarn, but it lays flat like ribbon. I'm going to glue two on the back. Again, I'm using matte medium. And I don't know if I'm in the thick of things with this. And that back flops open on me like an accordion and goes everywhere. That's going to disrupt me pretty good. Pull that over out of the way. And now we'll put two more on the back of the front. Or back, whatever it is. This other cover. I 
I wonder why I thought two on the back and one on the front. Hmm. I wish I could talk to you guys. Kind of want to make an attempt to get it lined up. That's good enough. Why did I think if I tied it twice on the back and once on the front? Hmm. thinking. Let me turn that off and then we'll explore that a little bit further. I get an idea and just go for it. I um, used some white duct tape. I dried these things pretty good. Not good enough it seems. Still getting glue out. Anyway, I got some duct tape to help secure those ends. Be sure and get it off your bone folder because you don't want to have to scrape around on it the next time you use it. Which would be a real good reason not to use it for that sort of thing when you've got credit cards right there. Alright, so far so good. Now we were going to think about this is my back back goes like this front goes like this Tie these in a knot, or bow, I'm sorry, a bow. Tie these in a bow. Let's go ahead and do that, how about? It? I'm going to be off camera for just a minute because I can't get my knees up there. And my knees are what is holding this. I cut plenty of ends so that I would be prepared for whatever happens. Now, see, this holds it closed on that back side. Theoretically, you open it. Now that's going to be attached right there, and either this will be attached here or that other group of pages will be attached here. And I am going to put that other group of pages in because that's not much. So then when I open it like that, what I was thinking first was just having one tie on the front. Then I could tie that closed and then open the back. And I think that would probably hold it. Now you know why? Because that thing's going to wiggle and torque because of the nature of the beast. So I'm going to repeat the same thing on the front. I'll have two. All right. I've got all four of them on there, and yes, I could have just done one long piece, put it across the middle, but I didn't. So there. If you do this, you might just want to cut one long piece. Now I'm going to... What am I going to do? I'm not going to do anything. I'm going to cut that right there. If this was even all the way around, I would cut 45 degree off of it. But if I do that here, I'm going to end up with some white space. So, cut that off. And I can cut this part down. That'll help a little bit. That's still going to be... What are you trying to do? 45 would still be better. That'll work. 
That'll work. Unfolder. So that goes up. And I'm going to leave those pieces long because that's going to give me just a little more reinforcement over the ties. Okay? So down here we're going to do the same thing. We're just going to cut that corner off. Cut that corner off. I like the way I'm measuring. And fold this baby up. Bone folder. Okay. Okay, because I was too cheap to get another piece of paper, remember I've got that raw edge here. And the paper is um, the paper cracked a little bit when I scored it or burnished it down with the bone folder, which is no big deal. It's because the paper is such good quality that it's thick. But that's great. You just learn to work around it and don't cut your string off. Okay. So I picked washi tape. And I picked one that is soft in color just like the cover. And I know that I have to glue this down in addition to the sticky that's on it. So I have already put down some quarter inch. This is from Angel Crafts. It was a special on Amazon. I could buy it at a special price if I would leave them a review and so I did and they did and everybody was happy. Now make sure you cover the double stick tape because if you don't it will make a mess you will never recover from. I haven't decided what I'm going to do with these corners yet. And you got one one chance to get it down. Cuz when that double stick grabs it's it's down. Turn it over. Now these ties are gonna we're gonna have come to Jesus meeting it for too long. Come on, stay all wadded up in there. Well you don't want that because you've got to get how you 
can do that. Well, I guess you're gonna cut it. First thing we gotta do is put the tape on this side. I've got matte medium. Even though I was cleaning my hands, I've got matte medium all over my fingers. I have a love-hate relationship with that stuff. Now, the only answer here is to cut the tape. And I don't know if it's going to take one or two. So we're going to start with one. And I'm going to try to open that back up. And cut here. And then cut. Be careful now. Take off that overlap. And then we'll cut this to there. Nope, wrong way. Cut it there. Can you see that? This way. I think one's going to do it because I can, yeah, one does it. So I just slid it and then pulled it up over my tie and that's going to give that tie just a little more security. Okay, cut this off. Okay, I'm happy, happy. Now I'm going to turn the camera off and do the other one. I'll be back. Hey guys, I figured I better turn the camera back on or I would make y'all mad. <laughs> um, I got my two books and that's the one I goobered so I know it's the top. And I matched the second book the same way so that it, it's fold is at the top and then what I did was I laid them back back of one to front of another 
and I have put matte medium on them with a leaf underneath so that and now the point is going to be to match these and I'm working from the fold up and out and I've got some wiggle room I'm not happy today because I was going to sew around my book pages and I completely goobered it up because my sewing machine thread kept breaking. So I'm not real happy and I may have to redo my covers. That's just the way it goes in the creative world. I've done that before, different things. I've done it in sewing, I've done it slip covering all the projects I've ever done. I guess if you did the same thing over and over and over and over and that's all you ever did you might be okay because you would eventually learn the tricks. And there you have it. I've got them glued together. Is that it? Yeah, that's it. I might put some more glue in that. Any matte medium that I got on this will not accept watercolor. The inside edges are sticking really good. I'll show you my cover since we've worked so hard on this. I'm just going to leave that clamped, let it get some air. Got two folds and two loose pieces. I don't know what's wrong with my sewing machine, but it keeps thread keeps breaking and I keep perforating. But I thought that would look cute with just a zigzag. I got all the way around this one. Um, it's not beautiful, but it's better than that. It didn't break once in here. So I know it's operator error. Um, I've just got to figure it out. But in the meantime, this is what the book will look like. This one goes on the front and glues right there. And this one goes on the back. Everything fall off. I 
After all that, have I done these backwards? It wouldn't surprise me. I think my mojo's off. Now that one's upside down. And I had planned this to be on the outside edge. And I planned this one to be on the outside edge. And the type is straight up and down. So there you have it. Once the clips come out of there. Now I'm also not real happy with my tie system. It will work. It's functional. But I may alter it to be some kind of a strap that hooks over. But we'll leave it for that for now. <clears throat> Let me pick up the remote. And I'm going to go ahead and glue these cover. Oh, I can't do that. Goose, you can't do that. I'm going to glue this cover on the front. Nah, I might as well wait. I'll see you guys when I get back to this. Okay, I did not film gluing the cover to the outside piece of the watercolor paper. Y'all can figure that out. And I thought I had filmed this one, but I guess I didn't. Bad me glued the back of one of the watercolor spreads to the front of the other which made a page. Now if you're if you're brave you can open this up like that. You can paint any which way you want. You can paint wide like that. I think I showed you that. You can even open this up all the way and lay it out flat the way you cut it. Okay? Not that you'd want to do that, but if you wanted to, you could. So, I don't I I do not I do not like my ties. Um I'm thinking I'm not sure what I'm thinking. A piece of canvas maybe that would snap so you could just pull it loose. You do need that binding otherwise you can't open it. Now here's the I mean I didn't say that right. You need that binding or it'll just continually blow open on you when you least expect it to. Now, the front's locked. Now we can untie the back. And this is the back side of pages. Same, same. So it's just a fun book. It's quick. Um, if you don't put covers on it, you can have two of these signatures done in a matter of 30 minutes. And uh, for the cost of two sheets of full-size watercolor paper, you're ready to go. So, over and out. Alright, see you guys.